they that wait, for those who's been around me long enough, you heard me kind of give this, this entendre. Uh, I talked about how waiting, anybody who sits on a park bench, anybody who sits somewhere and waits will eventually get weary. But if you look at that word as wait, as a waiter or a waitress, we build our strength up when we wait for the Lord, when we serve him, when we wake up every day ready to worship. I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable work, that's reasonable. All the stuff I did for you, I, I, I gave my son for you. My son, Jesus said, I gave my life for you. And, and I went through all of this for you and I to have fellowship. Giving me your life as a living sacrifice, as, as a worship, that's reasonable. <clears throat> Wouldn't you think so? It's reasonable for me to say, okay, God, I'm not going to worry about you serving me. Most Christianity in today's era is all about God serving us and not us serving God. I'll serve you, God, until after you serve me. No, God is not serving us. We're serving him. And in our service to him, things naturally begin to serve us. So they that wait upon the Lord, those that wait on the Lord, those who serve the Lord, asking God, how you want your coffee? How you want your tea? What you want for breakfast this morning? What you want from me today? What type of what type of a smell do you want to come from the kitchen of my soul? Like, like what do you want me to get into my soul and cook up for you? Like, like God, how, what type of book you want me to cook up for you? What, what type of message? I want this message to smell like waffles and, and sausage and eggs. I want, I want this message to smell to God that my son is cooking. <laughs> oh, my son down there cooking. You smell that? I want God to be going and looking at Gabriel. Gabriel, you smell that? Do you smell what Josh is cooking? That's what I want him to be like, man, you smell that? That message smells so good. He's serving me uh, uh, cheese grits, eggs scrambled with cheese, sausage patty, Jimmy Dean's. You see what I'm saying? Like, like that's what we cooking. Like every day, I'm opening myself as a restaurant, and and God, I'm sliding him the menu, and I'm asking God, tell me what you want from me today. That's how you renew your strength. Because have you ever been in a place where you serve someone? And the and the, and the, uh, and what you received from serving them served you all day. That joy of helping someone kept you up and, and bubbly all day. That good deed you did in private that really changed that person's life or serving someone on behalf of God. And you notice how that thing kept you full all day. They that wait upon the Lord the right way shall. He said, I put that shall in there. I went cogent. Shall renew their strength. So when you open your life up as a kitchen before God and say, God, when God comes into your presence, you ever been in a, in a restaurant and, and a, and a uh, cook or the waiter is singing? Or when you go to Waffle House, they got the jukebox juking? You know what I'm saying? And, and it's, this, it's this vibe or atmosphere. Like that's when, when God comes into my kitchen or when God comes to your kitchen, he wants to come into a kitchen that's joyful. He inhabits the praises of his people. So when, when your perspective is right, your praise is sweet and it creates an atmosphere that, that that person says, I just want to sit in Josh's life a little bit. I want to sit in this individual's life a little bit because I, I just want to just sit here. And then when he says, Josh, I want you to cook up this on it, God. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's what happens when you serve the Lord while you're waiting to be served. Next, Lamentations 325. I ain't preached that Lamentation in a while. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. <laughs> To the soul who seeks him. God is good to all of us. But there's a type of good that's a byproduct of those that wait for him, that worship him, that serve him, that 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 have the right perspective. 
that says, I, I see why I'm waiting, God. So while I'm waiting on that, we're not going to wait on that. My being, my essence, my three in oneness is not going to wait on that. What we're going to do is when it, it comes, when it comes, that's the mentality. It comes when it comes, because we have that mentality that it, it will come when it comes, then you will do what you got to do. It's hard for us to be available if we're watching the tracking. That's why God don't send us tracking numbers. We'll chase down trucks. That's why God says your confirmation number, when you send your prayer request due, when you go to God.com and you, you know, God.com got a bunch of stuff you can order. <laughs> God, God is such a big God. He big in Amazon. You can buy just, you can go out there and shop God all day. And the thing about God, God's on Amazon. The Almighty is Almighty.com. It's not Amazon. <clears throat> and so when you go to the Almighty.com or God.com and you place your order, what you order, even if you have an Amazon Prime membership, <laughs> see, see, those who are saved and whose Amazon Prime has been purchased by Christ, see, this, the world can ask God for stuff too. But the Christians got the Amazon Prime. You see what I'm saying? But even in our Amazon Prime, God says, I'm going to give you my peace as confirmation. All I need to know is that God heard me. That's enough. I've graduated to that. For, by God's grace, I've got to a place where it's like, God, I'm just glad you hear me. <laughs> because most of the stuff, if we had it now, we wouldn't have it now. Back to what I'm saying. So people go to God.com or Almighty.com, whatever you want to call it, and they shop God. And God says, I give you my peace. And, and like Amazon, Amazon gives you tracking number. <clears throat> and what most people do, they'll focus so much on the tracking and when it's coming than they are on what they should be doing. And so God don't even let you know when it's going to come. We just have to trust. It says, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. He's good to the soul. He was very specific. The soul who, what now? Seeks him. Does your soul seek him? While you're waiting, is your soul seeking? I'm talking about uh, your soul en encompasses your thoughts, your memories, your emotions, your ideas, what you know, like that, 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 that essence of you that connects you to the emotional realm of this world. Like, does that seek him? Like, do, do, does your soul seek to him as your source of pleasure? Does your soul seek his word for understanding? Like, what does your soul seek? Because if your soul is seeking for the package to be delivered, but you're not, your soul is not seeking to be delivered, then it will never be delivered. <laughs> see, see, most of our souls are waiting for God to deliver a husband, deliver a wife, deliver an opportunity, deliver you to next uh, 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 opportunities in business and entrepreneurship, deliver, deliver, deliver. But we're not asking God to deliver us. Could it be that the reason why the thing hasn't been delivered into your life is because you haven't been delivered? What needs to be delivered out of you in order for things to be delivered to you? So when your soul is seeking for God and your soul is delivered, the Bible says we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. Our mind is our soulless realm. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so when your soul seeks God, you're seeking for the right type of mind. You're seeking to be renewed. So instead of seeking a husband or seeking a spouse or seeking whatever, seek deliverance for that area. So if you want a marriage, but you don't have nothing in the carriage, then what you going to do? Your soul has to seek the Lord. 